Roller coasters are fun, thrilling, exciting. But have you ever wondered how do they actually work? Well, stay tuned and you will find out. Welcome back to my channel, Michelle Gay Science Teacher. In this video, we're going to explore roller coasters. We're going to discover how do roller coasters actually work. If you like these types of videos, please subscribe to my channel and also click the like button. First, we're going to look at how roller coasters are able to get their momentum and move quickly. In this simulation from PBS Learning Media, this demonstrates how kinetic and potential energy work with roller coasters. If you look at the beginning of this roller coaster, notice that there are tracks. At the beginning, I asked, how do roller coasters actually work? How do they keep their momentum? At the beginning of a roller coaster, the car is carried up the hill on the tracks, and then it gets to this point, the highest hill in the roller coaster. Notice that all the other hills are lower than the beginning point. This is this point at the highest hill is potential energy. Potential energy is energy that is stored. The higher the hill is, the more energy is stored. Once the car is released from this hill, it begins to move based on kinetic energy and gravitational pull. The kinetic energy is released and then it goes through a series of loops and valleys and hills and it picks up potential energy at some points and then kinetic energy is released. So let's take a look. We're just gonna go through the first one and notice the graph here at the top. All right, now let's look at it step by step. All right, it stops at the top and the graph is full because it is at its highest point. Potential energy is being stored here. This is when everyone gets excited on the roller coaster because they know what is going to happen next when that re roller coaster release from the top of the hill. Once it's released, the majority of the energy is kinetic energy. That's the blue part here in the graph at the top. And because of where it's beginning to start right here, it picks up some potential energy also. So most of the kinetic energy has been released. So now the car is getting ready to go farther. In the next step, we have kinetic energy still in force because it is the kinetic energy that's going to help the roller coaster to keep moving so it gets through this loop. Now we're here at the top part of the loop but the majority of the energy is potential energy because this energy is being stored so the roller coaster can continue to move through the loops and valleys and hills. Now we're back to full potential energy, kinetic energy, I'm sorry. So once it was released, now we have the kinetic energy and enough kinetic energy to carry it up to the next point for potential energy. And now we have kinetic and potential energy and notice how the car is placed it's part on the hill, but it's also moving down. And so roller coasters work because once it gets to that very top point and it's released and it gets its momentum and gravitational pull, a series of kinetic and potential energy carries the roller coaster until it comes to the end. Let's look at the roller coaster I designed. I kept it simple but you can create 
and design your roller coaster however you would like to. So here I'm starting at the very top point, which remember, you want your highest hill to be at the very starting point. Then it slopes down, and then we have our first hill, and I want you to determine as I go through, where is the potential energy and where is the kinetic energy? And then it slopes down again, and then we have another small hill, and then we have a cup to catch our marbles. Let's test out the first one. All right, now did you notice how fast the marble went? Do you think that occurred because of where the point we started at? Notice it did not slow, it did not slow down. And also when it came to the second hill and then it released here, it even picked up more speed. Now we're going to try something else. We're going to try two marbles and see if one marble can bump, bump the second marble into the cup. Let's test it out. So we're going to place, let's place it here. Okay. All right, very good. Notice the energy was released and it forced the first, the second marble to go into the cup. Now, how would we get it where both marbles would go into the cup? Do you think when it was, when it uh, tapped the second marble, do you think the energy, the kinetic energy slowed down for this marble or not? Think about that and discuss it with your, uh, with your parent, with your teacher, or with your classmates. All right, we're going to put it at a different point and test it out again. And when you're making your roller coaster, you do have to reinforce your um, heels by putting a piece of tape to the side to kind of keep it in place. Um, also get sturdy masking tape. This is, uh, masking tape is not as strong as I would like, but this is what I have. Okay, so we're going to place it here on this point. Let's see what happens. Yes, both went in. Now, notice that we placed it in two different places. Why did both marbles go in the second time? Think about that. If you would like to learn more about roller coasters, then go to Scholastic Super Science and check out their article on Thrill Rides. It is an excellent article written about roller coasters and how roller coasters work, and it also includes a short video that you can watch. Scholastic Super Science is free right now with online learning. I will leave a link below so that you can go and check it out. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I look forward to your comments on the roller coasters that you designed and what you learned. I hope that you will subscribe to my channel, Michelle Gay Science Teacher, and click the like button. Have a wonderful and blessed day.